I'm Roland Kahn. In this mini video I'm talking about making it happen. Imagine for a moment that you care about something. You have a dream and you want to make it happen. Imagine too that you want to be, do the right thing. You can jump right in there, but is that wise? What guidance might help you to arrive, avoid confusion, avoid mistakes, and avoid conflict along the way. I'm going to say a few things to start you thinking and encourage you to talk usefully to other people. Did you notice that word that I used, wise? In your situation you might just walk away and not get involved. You might bow to pressure, follow the crowd, follow the most forceful, strongest person. You might decide at random, all choices are equal. You might choose just what you want. What's most comfortable for you? Follow your gut feel. You might use some mechanical method, like listing the pros and cons. You might think rationally from evidence. Rational thought needs information and understanding. If you have them, you can be reasonable perhaps make a good choice. None of these in themselves is wise. Each of these options is appropriate in different situations. Wisdom is something else. Wisdom lies in choosing the right one for where you are. We don't think about evil very much these days, but it's very real and we need to take account of it in the project. The first evil is perhaps obvious. It's opposition. You are likely to be ignored, laughed at, attacked, put down. Then there are the diversions and the distractions of other things that are more important, more exciting, more urgent. Next there is the subtle interference and sabotage. It's not obvious, but it's very real and it happens. Your job will get interfered with, it might even get sabotaged. Next, there are the unknowns and the unexpected. They are always present, they are always there, there are always things that you don't know, always things that you have not expected. And perhaps most grave of all, and the most interest to me, there are the bad choices, the mistakes that get made. These too are evils to be dealt with. So what are we going to make happen? My suggestion, which you don't have to agree with, is this. We want a Quaker Centre at Jesus Lane. It presents an alternative to violence. This is in accordance with our peace testimony. It's a community centre in which we treat people with equality and respect. That's part of our testimony on equality. It should be eco-friendly and sustainable in many different dimensions. This is part of our stewardship testimony. For me, most interestingly, we need to make wise decisions and we need to teach people how to make wise decisions. This is our testimony on integrity. Is this practical? Is it realistic? Does it make sense? We're all familiar with buying a pair of shoes. You go in a store, try on a few pairs, decide what you like, pay for it, job done. Making a Quaker Centre is not as simple as that. A building, as Le Corbusier said over a hundred years ago, is a tool for living. So our Quaker Centre is a tool for our Quaker life. What is this Quaker life? It has a location. We are constrained by where we are. It has a skeleton, a structure, a framework, a shell. And on that skeleton there is flesh. The functional systems that make the building what it is. The heating, the lighting, the plumbing, the loo. Then it has some clothes. It has decoration. And it has equipment inside it. These are the things that make it unique. And it performs actions. It does things. has an effect. It gives service to the community and to the to Quaker movement. It's used. We have to operate it and to maintain it for it to do its job. 
So here we have a bit of a picture, but I think we need more. We need a map, how we're going to do this. Everyone likes to think positively, to see the fun, the excitement, the uplift, and the good stuff. No problem, it'll be all right on the night. This is like suddenly climbing Everest in a t-shirt and sandals, expecting to get there in a quick afternoon stroll. Ain't gonna happen. There are unknowns, lots of them, so we have to be prepared to avoid the worst disasters. Spending a little effort now facing the uncomfortable will ensure success and avoid waste of time and effort later. We're making a journey into the future. It's an adventure, but it's also a social enterprise. We are working together, and we're working together with other people for the benefit of our community. You might not have thought of it as a spiritual exercise. We have evils to combat, experience to gain and to use. Most of all, the map is a way to get what we want as easily as possible. The first thing to think about is where could we end up? There are lots of places on the map and we need to know which of those are success and which of those we count as failures. What's going to get in the way to throw us off course and stop us getting where we want to go? What are the dangers on the way? What risks do we need to take seriously? Where are we starting from now? What are our strengths, our weaknesses? What opportunities do we have and what threats do we face? Usually there's more than one route, each with different advantages and disadvantages. We're not buying a pair of shoes. We're on a journey to the moon. There are lots of unknowns lots of opportunities to make mistakes. We need to progress in bite-sized steps. This set of steps is sometimes known as the waterfall method. It's been developed in industry and, and business over hundreds of years and works in many situations. It's easy to understand. Each step has to be completed. You can start them any way you want, but you need to finish them in order. Each step is separated by a commit point. You recognize and approve what work has been done, the progress that you've made. You limit the risk and expenditure. Most importantly, you avoid and control the mistakes that might be otherwise be made. Phases are threads of tasks and work. You can do phases in parallel. Phases can take account of the physical logic of the structure of the building and the way that it works. You can take account of different resources that you need and what's available and not available and you can take account of other particular circumstances for your particular project. We have concerns that we revisit, develop and check at each stage in the project and when the centre is in operation. It's a Quaker project. We are a religion and a charity. Everything that we do needs to be focused on that function. We are a community and we're part of a community. So working with and contributing to our community including concerns like justice, conflict. Safety is about the care of the people who use the centre, now and in the future. Security is about the care of the property and the people who use it. Cash is about income, expenditure, balancing our books, and, interestingly, a measure of our contribution to the world. Performance is about being effective, efficient, reliable, usable, maintainable, adaptable, and long-lived. Sustainability is about being viable. Does it work? Is it going to stay alive? Is it integrated and being environmentally friendly? Quality has to do with value, durability, resilience, comfort, flexibility and responsiveness. Style has to do with the aesthetic appearance of the building and of the things in it. Most importantly, how do we make choices? What is wise? How do we organise? Who's taking the lead and how do we lead? management and dealing with those uncertainties. You might not have thought of craft in these terms. The craftsman is the agent who makes it happen. This is where we as individuals engage with the project and with the centre. Each of these seven steps is vital to how we do the job, how we engage with the centre and our project. It's all about making decisions and acting on them. And that brings me right back to the Quaker business method and discerning wise choices. The centre, and indeed our project, has different faces to it, and you can look at it from a number of different points of view. I've already mentioned our contribution both to our community and to our local community. 
You can also look at it in terms of political will. Do we have an appetite for the centre? Is there an appetite out there for the sort of centre that we have in mind? We also need to satisfy the regulations of people outside who are concerned about safety security. We are in a conservation area and we need to worry about that as well as the electrical safety and our plumbing and so on. What room is there? What, how much space do we have? How much time do we have? How much time do we need? How much money does it take to build, to change, to run? Importantly, who's in the building? Who's in the project? Who's on the committee? Who's out there that we have to satisfy? Do we have at each stage the knowledge, the materials, the technology and the equipment that we need to do the job, to run the building? And does the centre have the knowledge, materials, technology and equipment for the task of servicing the community? I've painted a picture for you. It's up to you what you do with it. You can say, this is not for me, walk away, end of story, no problem. You can say, well, it's okay, but it doesn't quite suit me. It needs to be tweaked and pointed and poked and adjusted. No problem. Go do it. Over to you.